Welcome. Uh, welcome to the dark cave. No. <laughs> it's going to grow on us. I hate recording in this cave, but you know what? You got to do what you got to do because we had such an amazing, fun day climbing and that we didn't get around to doing this until 8.30 at night. And we have a really awesome show. Subject, we have an yeah. awesome show for you today. Remember to like and subscribe, share it with some friends. Um, we're really making an effort. So try to give you some quality and aside from our RV life, but also show you how to become a better human, right? Wow. It's kind of taboo, huh? Who would yeah. think we'd talk about relationships? In the end, that was always the mindset that like, I got certain things figured out. You guys figure that out. But I think we're ready to, well, actually she's always been ready. Okay. Um, so we got this great today. I thought of um, the best Valentine gift you can give your spouse. And the reason what started this is because we know uh, some people in our lives that uh, the relationships have not made it to this point where they're going to be celebrating on Valentine's Day together. Right. And not that I really care about Valentine's Day because as it is, I will not let Victor buy me any roses. He well, used to you buy know, me I spent a lot of money at the florist that first year. When we were first dating, he would have roses, a dozen roses for me like every week. And then when we started, we were together and it was like this joint money, I'm like, that is a waste of money. Save it up and buy me a new fifth wheel. That's, that's Robin in a nutshell. <laughs> I've always wanted to upgrade even her wedding ring and she wouldn't let me do that. That's no. just the way she is. But sometimes, you know what? I just want to buy my wife. And I really should compromise because the only thing Victor wants for Valentine's Day is those little candied hearts. But like, you know that there's like yellow number five and red number something and, that, <laughs> and like, I really should like grow as a I person like and like just those. buy it for him and know that like as long as he manifests in his head that it won't harm him, they're like really harmless. And so <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll make a special trip to Walmart before then. Okay, so we saw it's it really does break my heart to see families um, break up struggling. Yeah, and you know as much as like there is definitely a time and place when a relationship you've tried everything and you're just not going to see eye to eye but somebody who knows that we do not see eye to eye in almost everything and we've still managed to make it and we actually have really good time together uh in fact let me just throw a shout it's out victor went climbing belay. today and he finished her I out belayed sweet today. you finished her out you wanted to give up and you didn't yeah it was I, it doesn't I, matter I, I the level. I don't know how to tell you this, but I was pretty amazing today. No. <laughs> he normally would have come down. I'd be like, oh man, it's so, there's nothing to hold on to. You know, the, if, in, if, unless it's like a ladder, it's always a little bit challenging for me. But in the end, uh, you know, whatever. The right, the stars were in alignment. It's the age of Aquarius. That's it. You know, ultimately the things are like, like, dude, I gotta get, she's not gonna stop this. And this maybe speaks of... Hey, and I didn't different. push, so maybe it helped because I didn't push you. Exactly. In the end, um, you know, I know she's going to be climbing for the next multiple decades. I'm like, man, I got to gotta be able to do something. She could take the rope up, but I got to be able to do something. And again, it's not a function of strength. It's always just a feeling like, ah, oh, this feels so precarious. It so truly I is. Gotta, I don't want to make that move. I don't want to make that it's move. It's not even necessarily a dangerous Usually thing. I even know it's like, God, I turn my hip to the wall, high foot, reach and grab and hope that it's there. And I can even see the chalk today. I'm like, God, that's where it is. I just got to get right there. It's silly, but whatever. Uh, everyone goes through it and I don't really, I'm confident enough that I could share that experience. Okay, go ahead. So I was thinking about this one relationship that uh, Victor was just talking to the person about why they need to stop training with him because of financial reasons. And I thought about like, wow, it's really hard because in this day and age with everything that's going on, we tend to only focus on the effect, the re what we are presented with right now. Well, this person I know might not love that person anymore at all because there have been so many hurts and pains along the way. But only two years ago, that same person was crying in Victor's gym because the person they loved had cancer and didn't know if they'd make it through. And sure enough, that relationship was really good before lockdowns. And I don't think these are the only people in the world that have, have something similar, yeah. maybe not cancer, but that you really did feel aligned with this person. And maybe COVID was a good excuse to to see where it's there were flaws excuse. for some people, for it's some, not, maybe yeah, to yeah, leave maybe, bad relationships, maybe, maybe. I mean. But I think what's sad is that nobody's looking back to think, what triggers did that lockdown cause financially, emotionally, 
Uh, and what I was going to touch on today is just based on personality. I can, I can read people really well. If I know, well, one, if I talk to you for more than five minutes, I usually can pick up on your Enneagram and your Myers-Briggs. I know in this relationship that one of them was a seven and one was a six. And if you're a seven, you are all about positivity, positive emotions. You know, quite honestly, sevens are so fun, but they tend to shy away from anything negative as emotionally. Okay. Sixes hold really strong to fear and anxiety, even though they don't even notice most of the time. They just see sure. themselves as loyal, as rule following. And so if you have a six who gets put in lockdown and is told that there is some virus that is going to wipe out a significant percentage of the earth, and you put in that same house a seven who maybe is still worried, especially if their wings a six, but who's worried, but at the same time, like, needs fun in their life, needs extroversion, needs some type of sense of community, and you take that away from them, that is absolutely a, a recipe. recipe. Sure. So my, my thing today is that I want to say, like, you should, don't put off another day to know what your Enneagram is. If I don't know that Victor is a 2-3 and he doesn't understand that I'm an 8-7, then we will hit heads. We still will hit heads sometimes, but at least we can go and be like, okay, this is your 2-3, uh, this is your 8-7, you know comment you know you're being a little too assertive here by doing that we let add a layer of compassion and understanding and at least we have a clear starting point instead of going six months or a year and thinking like we're fighting about real estate or fighting about custody or fighting about all these other things that we truly are fighting about because we didn't look at what the original cause was the origin sure it's sort of like medicine sometimes uh i can get down with people for me um an an extreme case would be that someone is ill and then I look at their nutrition I'm like well this is why you're ill you're not taking care of yourself you eat horribly tons of processed foods and I'm like you don't need medication you just need to do this and this um, and a lot of times doctors there's some out there that are probably still can treat a patient maybe an origin but they're putting up they're putting a medication on a symptom and so you got to get to the origin why is that person in this ease uh, as opposed to like let me just treat the anxiety or the depression. I'm like, hey, does this guy actually have a reason to be depressed? Like, yeah. maybe deal with that, right? And it applies to everything. I mean, I think if like I uh, absorb or listen to a lot of economic stuff right now, and if I think about how much, I imagine it's not the craziest thing to think like monetary system could collapse. You never know, it might not, but people would right now think like, oh my gosh, how did it just collapse? But if you study it long and if you know like, well, we've had stuff set up for a really long time, multiple decades that would do that. It's the same thing. It's money, health, fitness, um, and relationships. It's the same thing. So maybe getting back, drawing back to that essence of like, okay, how do you, how do you, um, so what's your core, de Enneagram is really your core design. Yeah, let's, let's, let's back up a second. And, and in the end, what we're talking about here is that Robin is talking about, look, if you're, if you're struggling in your relationship, well, everyone struggles in the relationship, right? I mean, I don't know anyone that doesn't have some struggles. Um, if you're struggling, obviously, obviously what's happened the last year is going to add a level of overflow. It's just like a bucket. I always tell clients, you know, you can, I just know what, what the right amount of workout is so I don't overflow their bucket. This is why you see someone do an intense, high intensity workout. This is what the knock was against CrossFit for many, many years, many, many years is because, like, wow, there's these transformations. That's wonderful. But there's some people it doesn't work for because it overflowed their bucket on what they can handle. And so a, a secret in that relationship is to figure out, first, is my bucket overflowing? Well, check most people are like well how especially you have to take an active role in figuring out what that is and for me just being kinder and more accepting although that sounds very good you know that's, that's not, not enough and i'm a, someone that can be that's my thing is to be really compassionate and in our relationship if i can be if i'm more compassionate it doesn't necessarily work anymore I'm actually at my kind of my level like, limit as to how compassionate I can be when she's her eight self. And so I have to take like, okay, she's saying this from a place of this. 
don't try to take it personally. And that's me having an understanding um, because we sit around all day talking about personality types. Again, we're not putting you in a box. This is just to give you more insight into your significant other or the relationship that you have with a person that might be strained. It's, okay? And then it's really hard too because uh, if you get if you test as a different as the wrong number, so it helps if you test that's with tricky. somebody we tend to perceive ourselves as different than we actually are. Mm -hmm. But this really comes down to um, core desire, figuring out. Remember, in a couple episodes ago, we talked about how important desire is. So we have this like monetary desire, maybe a um, sense of individuality, like I'm a successful blogger or uh, how the world perceives me, perceives us as a desire, right? We have this desire to make a certain amount of income. Like, I want to manifest $100,000 so I can have a brand new truck and a brand new toy hauler, whatever it is. We have that. That's different desire. That's an important desire. But when you know your core desire, you know the best way to work towards that means. Because so if I pretended to be a type three, type threes and type eights are mis, uh, misnumbered, mistyped, mistyped Mistype. often. Threes are very much more achievement based. They need to check the boxes okay? and there's nothing wrong with that. Gabby's a type three. That's why she lead climbs as she does. She needs to have those, those actual checks. I don't necessarily, I mean, I was like, I was a straight A student and I was fine, but it wasn't in that, like I need challenge. So meaning I might check a box, but I don't have much. I need to go find another box and another box and another box. And you know, Victor type types as a type nine at first, and he's truly a type two. Type nines though are very similar. Type two and type nines really want just peace. I really don't want any conflict in my life. Can we just make this easy? They tend to kind of fall asleep to any emotions. Now a type two might also be that, but they also have this tendency to want to give a lot. You know, they're like the host or the servant and like, what can I get you? Um, type ones and fives. Type ones really want everything perfect. You know, everything's labeled. There's a system for everything. Type fives might seem like that, but really they just need, they love information. And so with each of these things, we can think like if I was married to a type five, I would have to go out of my way to provide them all the research. Okay, all the research for, here's all the information about this. Here's all the information and, about this. And a lot of this is probably, oh, you're, if you're listening to it and you're one of our fans, you're probably like, oh my gosh. This is why I get so frustrated. For example, even in travel, yes. you're like you maybe you're the one that wants to take a leap into full time travel, but you have someone that's a five, and like no, no, I don't have every T crossed, every I dotted. I need to make sure I have all the information. Yeah, that's challenging, and so that can create a significant amount of conflict because you think like, man, I'll just figure it out. But I think it helps. I mean, I know if I was married to somebody like that, I would just be take it upon myself like, all right, cool. I'm going to get you all the brochures and I'm going to give you a date on the calendar, read through all of them. And I want a decision by this date. And, you know, hopefully you're both willing in a relationship to, to do those things. But it, it definitely, I mean, we can go, I'm, I'm just got to get them all, all these videos compiled and put it in a course or something. But there's so much information on any of them. You really wait, let me stop and interject again. This is a great time. So Robin alluded to this about understanding that and that people mistype. So I'm going back. This is important that you do it. I think with your significant other, mm -hmm. because when I tested initially, there was a few things like she, the way I interpreted a question, the way she interpreted a question, I saw her perspective. I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. Now I understand this question and I answered it. And so it made a little bit difference into what I came out and then ultimately I ended up and Sometimes you have to think of yourself in uh, different times too in your life. Like maybe what was your 20 year old self like or 15 year old or 30 year old self? Um, because, you know, right now it's uh, how we behave or what we want right now probably is different. And I mean, when you tested, I remember for, for Victor, it was very much like he had been doing the same job 20 years. His routine was the same. There weren't enough external changes, changes to like know even. Yeah. Based on that, you put us in an RV and then across in a tent in Norway and tent in New Zealand. You, we add all these other factors to our life. These things come out real, real quick in when you have more stressors. So the, absolutely, it's good. Better There's to a, figure all this out before, obviously, a significant amount of stress or before you're in a space where you can't have the space to an, sort of analyze and look at it. If you're in a heated heat of the moment, like 
you know, you're, you're just not going to want to go there. You're going to want to throw anger on that. But remember in my, my previous video, anger can be a tool. If you're feeling anger, that's yeah. better than indifference. <laughs> you know, you get to indifference. There's some serious problems, but just figure out where that anger is coming. So for Valentine's day, you can test and figure out what Enneagram you are. And then you can put it in a card and, and make requests. Like I could make requests to Victor and say like, Hey, based on, my Enneagram, I really yes. need some challenge in my life, but my wing is as a seven and that means I need some fun. So it's she really likes to party. It's really important she that we go party. party once in a while. And she likes to think she's in a tuxedo shirt. <laughs> and Victor's a two. He's like, okay, but I just don't think of these things, but I really want to help. So can you give me tangible things to do in the job that we're trying to do together? And can you really actually sit and show me how to like upload this YouTube video so you don't get mad at me that I have to No, you're going to mess it up. <laughs> and, right. and can you, you know, but my wings are three. And so I really need to start doing some tournaments in jujitsu because I really need to feel this competitive edge. And so all those things, you can make these requests because I did a yoga teacher training back in 2012. And the biggest lesson I took from that was a teacher who talked about some yoga principles. And he was talking about bhavana, which is your life purpose, basically. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm kind of already on that path. But then he said, look, it, my secret to marriage is making requests. And I was like, that is so true, right? I have to make my requests with a softer tone and less assertive. Whatever. <laughs> but yes, make lots of requests instead of orders orders and then throw anger on it and then be frustrated tired exhausted most people are too tired and exhausted to have the space to even work on the relationship and that's a problem so that goes back full circle to self-care you know that's the first part I'm like are you taking care of yourself are you we actually out? have a blog right? okay links there links there we actually have a blog uh self-care for each enneagram super simple makes a big difference do it take care of yourself and then you could take care of that other person and have the space to like write down write down some stuff it sounds horrible like you take a relationship and go by feel well i'm a big feel kind of person but i'll tell you this like i you know intuition and feel to only carry you so far once in a while you got to put pen to paper or and have a firm understanding i'm like oh this is what you meant you weren't necessarily trying to hurt me like why do i keep feeling like that no. And last thing, I know we talked about a lot of things on self-limiting beliefs, but once you get that Enneagram thing out and you figure it out, you probably have to look back and like we, most people, we don't, but most people live by those self-limiting beliefs about like, I have to work at a job for 30 years and have this house no, to have retirement. security and this retirement fund that could change really fast, you guys. So, so don't. Don't be stuck in this, like not nurturing each other as a human being, because you're so afraid of like hitting that mortgage payment and so afraid of like, if your IRA a, yeah, isn't security, a certain... security is a fallacy anyway. And so might as well live your life the way Age you want it. Age of Aquarius, creativity. And be, and be able to pivot. <clears throat> All right. Okay. See you tomorrow.